Legend of Korra Season 4 premiered after all these years. It took me forever to finally get to watch this episode. I was watching it early. I got up early for me. It was like 12, actually. It's kind of late. But I was watching the episode, and my computer kept screwing up at, like, the end of the episode. I had to restart it, like, three times. And then, you know, the Nick website really wasn't helping me get to where I needed to because the, their player really sucks. I don't know if you guys experienced that, but you can't really go full screen. And they don't, like, whenever you click something, it jumps way off from where you are. And I was watching the scene, like the part with Milo when he was talking about from going from a boy to a man. I wanted to see that because that was probably the funniest scene in this episode to me. And I clicked to go back, like it was only five or ten seconds, and it jumped to literally the end of the episode, like the credits. It wasn't even just anyone there, it was just credits. So it took me forever to finally finish it, and I got to see like the last bit with Korra in it. I finally got to see that just now. And... You know, it was really good. It does, it wasn't exactly necessary for the review, but it would kind of be pointless without it because I wouldn't know what happened. It was just like, I don't know how much you get out of that little ending. And we don't get much, but you do get enough to have some speculations on it. It was definitely a great premiere. I wish it was an hour long, but, you know, even in this little half hour episode, they established a ton of stuff straight up. It was like three years later, everyone's doing their own thing. You get to see Asami. She's the first person we really get to see. She's, of course, doing her business. She's, you know, the characters all look fairly the same. Like, she has, like, longer hair, and that was really, like, the only difference. So she gets longer hair, Corey gets shorter hair. But no one really looks like they've gotten older except for the kids more than anyone. But it was really cool to see everybody. Mako's the bodyguard to the new prince who's actually going to be the king of the Earth Kingdom. And currently he's Prince Wu. He's a really silly character. He's just weird. And the scene when they were walking down the hallway together, he just looked like a straight up leprechaun. He had like the leprechaun hat. And of course, he's Earth Kingdom, so it's just all green. And it was like, he looks like a leprechaun to me. So that's what I thought. But he's, you can just tell this guy isn't really the brightest. He's just the spoiled rich kid. And I don't know if his family was well off beforehand, or maybe he's just like this because he was living a sort of normal life. And now it's like, boom, he's the new prince. He's been chosen because his great aunt died. And he's the prince now, and he's going to become the king. So he's just like, poof, his head's inflated like that. So he's, you know, superhuman, which I love that scene. That was really funny. But, you know, he's going to be an interesting character. I can't wait to see what crazy crap happens with Mako now that he won't be able to go back to being a detective. He's going to have to go and move to the Earth Kingdom. But it was definitely interesting and that in one episode they um you know they set up so much especially with the earth kingdom and of course we all knew kuvira was going to be like the main antagonist because that kind of got leaked so everyone found that out but in this when we got to see her fight she was just amazing like she was doing all these moves and stuff it looked kind of funny because it looked like she wasn't doing anything when she was doing the moves but that's because she was shooting off just like the tiny little bits of her armor so you couldn't really see much and also when she was like moving the people around nothing was really happening with her so it was just her like doing this doing like cool martial arts moves but then they show the scenes where the people are getting like sucked together and stuff but she was really cool and she was just taking those people down super quick like hitting them all like right in the eyes and making them blind or hitting their legs and tripping them up it was really cool to see that and she of course instantly came off as the evil character but the way she's doing it it's like she's you know some people call her the great um unifier i believe is what they turned her and it was kind of cool to see that like she's considered a good person like at this point she's a good person and it'll be interesting if she is not the main antagonist then they really made this season really crazy because i don't know where they could bring someone else out from but you know the pictures we got or the scenes we had are just really reinforcing this episode and she just seems evil she's the, the great unifier and she kind of does it by force. She doesn't really give a crap about these little villages. And we get to see that firsthand, which is really, really cool. And that incorporates some other great stuff that we're going to get this season. And that is the airbenders, of course, who were really amazing in this episode. And we got to see, of course, two of the newer airbenders who had a fairly big focus last season, of course. And that's Kai and Opal. And so they're working together. They have their really cool wingsuits and... I love the scene when they come in, when they actually come in to get the guys who just robbed the store. 
I think my favorite part about that was that the guys looked up and saw the airbenders and they gasped like, holy crap, like the airbenders are here. They're going to, you know, they're going to kick our butt. So I thought that was actually really cool. They have some real force in the world. It's been three years. They've been doing things since Korra's kind of disappeared, really. So it was really cool to get that, like that little scene. They all just gasped like, holy crap, we we're screwed now because two airbenders are here. And it was like, I think three or four guys. So it was kind of cool to see they have that sort of just show of force. Like, they just showed up, and it's like, holy crap, it's the airbenders. So that was really cool. Unfortunately, they couldn't really do much in this situation. The bandits apparently are just armed with all sorts of crap. They had grappling hooks and freaking airplanes to, you know, chase them down. But it was great to see them, and of course we got to hear a little bit about the relationship stuff. Uh, Kai is doing fine in his, and then we got this stuff with Opal and... Uh, I can't even think of it. Bolin. I was going to call him Boomy. I knew that was wrong. Uh, Opal and Bolin. And I like the stuff that's going on with her character. I think she's going to get a lot more focus because she's dealing with such a really, really close connection to um, basically Kavira. And it, it was just really cool to see that. Like, she's. Her brother kind of left. And we don't get a lot of explanation from that. I don't know. If it's because her brother left and joined, who Kuvira is now like the great unifier, and they knew that she was doing it by force, but he still left his family to go help her out. So that could be a part of it. I'm sure we'll get a lot more info on it. But they're getting married, and so she's mad about that, and then she's upset that Bolin is helping. And of course, Bolin is just like, you know, Bolin's Bolin, so he's just like, you know, we're just helping people. What's the problem? And so they may or may not grow apart through this season. So I thought that was actually really cool. And she got a lot of interesting focus that I know we're going to get a lot of explanation for as far as the specific details as to why she's mad at her brother and really why her entire family considers him to kind of betrayed them. So I thought that was really cool about her. With Kai, we don't get too much. He's a little taller. He's older. And you know, he's just you know a cool airbender. So there wasn't much there. But it was great to see both of them. Um, the stuff with Kuvira after they couldn't save the village and couldn't get the food to them with her like saying like you know pledge your loyalty to me if you want to keep your position stuff like that of course just it makes her evil so it was really cool to see her it showed we got to see her strength we got to see her sort of political side with her saying like you know you have these options but she doesn't say it in a nice way like you have options you can either stay as your village or you can join me She'll say, like, you know, join me or you will get killed because you're all weak or something like that. So she doesn't do it in a nice way, but she's trying to kind of get everyone together. And it's sort of like the Earth Kingdom uh, symbol with the, metal, uh, with the metal. So it'll be interesting to see how that really affects things with the Earth Kingdom because it's like the prince and then the great unifier. So I'm, I'm definitely excited to see those two sides sort of come to a head. But overall, I definitely love the season premiere. Of course, getting to see Korra at the end of this episode was definitely pretty cool. And she's just kind of off doing her own thing. She's in Earth Kingdom. The thing about it was that, of course, it made me think of like the underground tournament from The Last Airbender that they went to where they met Toph. So that was kind of cool. It's a much smaller ring and you know stuff like that. And maybe, I don't know why she really got paid because the guy said it was for your lackluster you know, participation. I don't know if you just get paid in general or if she's one of like, the prize fighters or whatever. But it was really interesting, and she's kind of given up on everything. I know we're going to get flashbacks, because, of course, in the trailer, they show her cutting her hair and stuff. So we're going to get the flashbacks in one of these episodes. I don't know if it'll be the next episode or anything, but it was definitely a great episode. One thing that really stood out to me was when Kuvira was talking to the old guy, and she was kind of yelling at him and stuff, and he was trying to be sort of really calm about it like you know we have to do this and do that i really thought of iroh in that situation like what would iroh think about this older guy and what would iroh say to her if he was in this situation because that's how just how the guy was speaking back to her it really made me think of iroh and i thought that was a really cool scene um just everything about this episode was good it had its really funny moments particularly with the prince him just being real like when he got hit by the pie I thought that was really funny. He was freaking out, like, what would have happened? It was like, he would have got hit by a pie, no big deal. And then he somehow confused him being allergic to, like, strawberries to being allergic to bee stings. So it was just really crazy with him. So I'm definitely excited to see more of him because I feel like Bolin 
in his current state won't be the real comedic force that we've had him in, in you know in previous seasons but I think it's going to be really good. I can't wait till the team actually gets together. That's what I really want to see is when they all actually join up and they're sort of because really it is like four separate storylines with everyone because Bolin is with Kuvira, which is totally different from Korra, who's just somewhere off on her own, which is very different from Mako, who's now the bodyguard to a prince, soon to be king, and he's moving to the Earth Kingdom, and then you have Asami, who is still in the city and. You know, it's just, it's really interesting to see how far apart they are now. And like Asami said, it would be cool to have, like, the old team together. And even though it hasn't, of course, been three years for us, you can tell how different things are. They're just, like, even though, like, Mako and Asami are, like, in the same city, it just seems like they're just so far apart, even though they're just right there. So, it was a great season premiere. We didn't get much of, um, like, the older characters, like, the adults, I mean. But... I'm sure we'll get a lot more of them. We'll get some cool action, of course. The one adult everyone really wants to see is Toph, because they did that in the trailer, of course. But it was a great season premiere. I think, you know, this season's definitely looking up. I, I, I love last season. I don't know if it'll beat that, because, you know, the Red Lotus and Zaheer and his team, like, the music they have for them, just everything about them was unbelievable, because they just were, like, destroying people. So it was nothing like we'd ever seen before. And I don't know what we're going to get. It seems like it's going to be sort of a mix of that as well as, like, a political show of force, which, you know, I kind of can't wait to see. But, of course, comment below. Let me know what you guys thought about this premiere, your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And, of course, why do you guys think Korra left and just kind of disappeared? Why'd she stop being the Avatar? Comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.